Thank you so much, Coach Diaz, for uh, agreeing to talk with me today. I'm so excited. As you know, I'm Scott Greenwood. I'm the uh, Interim Chief Engagement Officer here at Duke, and our alums are so excited to get to know you a little bit better, so I'm glad we can have a few minutes to talk today. Uh, I've had a chance to spend a little time with you while we've been on the road at different uh, venues, and so it's a real honor for me to be here to talk with you. So I'm going to start with the first question. From the moment you were named Duke's 23rd football coach, you seem to be like all in. You jumped right in from the very beginning. Uh, we all remember the iconic moment of you and Cameron and the, with the crazies. We remember you making that shot. <laughs> Just talk about, was there something that, that made it so easy for you to feel like you'd been here forever? There was nothing easy about making the shot. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Um, well, you, you mentioned making it easy, the, um, the people here. Uh, make it easy. And even before I was named head coach, just going through the interview process um, and ev everyone I spoke to, wh whether that was Nina King or President Price, um, and you started to realize you're, you're going to get to work with some really extraordinary people um, who, and, and you can't help but feel their passion for Duke. Uh, then you get on the job and everyone you meet, you feel the same thing. And so you know, look, college football, it's a, it's a difficult proposition, especially right now, and, and you, you can't win on your own. The best universities have alignment uh, from, from top to bottom, and I, and I felt that early on, which, which, you know, gave me the enthusiasm to attack the, the job full speed. Yeah, I think that is really true about Duke. It's one of the best things about this place is that there's just a real sense that we're all in this together, which is really awesome. Speaking of all in together, I noticed your family. Uh, again, I've seen uh, your family at different events. Everybody's really into being at Duke. So was this just a family decision as well that people were pretty excited about the chance to come here and maybe tell us a little bit about family connection? Well, yeah, it's remarkable. I mean, last summer, uh, my wife, Stephanie, and my youngest son, Manny, were here on campus, stayed at the Waduke and, and, um, and took a tour uh, as a pr prospective student. And my son decided that Duke was absolutely his top choice. He loves the golf and was actually on the course and about four holes in, the skies open and just, you know, he, he got poured on. Um, but that didn't deter him. Uh, you know, he just so, um, to his credit, you know, he went back to, to school in the fall, did the work, all the applications. So we had it in our mind that we were kind of all in on Duke all fall anyway. And then also I was, you know, there were members of the staff the last couple of years yeah. who I worked with at Miami um, and so with all the success that the team was having, we would have conversations. So in a way, I was getting a little bit of the inside story of what was, um, what was going on here. So when the job did open, um, let's just say, yes, it, it, didn't, it didn't feel like a coincidence. And, and the family was very excited about the potential to come here. Well, we love that the whole family is engaged. And I know you have a son at another school, but I did see that the last time I saw him, he was wearing more Duke blue than That's anybody. Right. So I think he, uh, he seems he's pretty much part of the family now as well. One of the things we talk about in, in my work that we really are talking about building community uh, for, for Duke alumni. I, I think you're in the community building as well. How do you think about building community around the football program? Well, you want our football players to feel the power of Duke, right? And where does that come from? Is right. it the buildings? Is it things that happened in the past? I mean, it, it, it really is the people. We have a chance when we go into a high school and our staff, we went into high schools for three straight weeks in the month of January. And you don't really know what you're selling until you get around the people who you're, you're selling it to. And the realization that not only can we sell the preeminent elite academic institution in Power 5 football, um, but what we can sell in terms of life after football. We only make one promise to all everyone we recruit is that someday someone will tap you on the shoulder and say, no more football for you. Hmm. And where will you be that day? Now, that might happen after college. It might happen after a short NFL career or long, but it's going to happen. Right. And so where are you going to be? And to be a part of the Duke community, to be a part of that Duke alumni network is something that no other school can offer. So when you walk into a high school and you sit down with a family and say, you have a chance to compete for championships on the field, um, but if you want to live a long time on this planet, you better think long term. And that's where our community is second to none. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a phrase we say a lot in my uh, office as well and around with our alumni forever Duke, which for us means that when you join this community, as we're talking about, it's not just for the four years of an undergraduate degree or the two to eight years for a graduate degree, but it's, it's forever. 
Is that sort of the mentality you're talking about? Sort of does forever, what does forever Duke mean to you? Maybe that, I'll that, give you the Well, chance. that's exactly right. Well, when you're when you're 17 years old, forever is when you're turning 22. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You're 22 exactly. feels like you're old by that. <laughs> um, but you want, you know, the parents, they understand it, you know, because they, you know, look, 17 year olds that are really good at football, they think the world is going to bend to them at all times. You know, like, you know, who would want to hire me? You know, everything's worked out great so far. But I think the families, they, they really get uh, to be a part of something forever. Now, it's not just words. When they come here and they see how people come back, when they see how, you know, everyone I meet, oh yeah, I went to Duke, my, I met my wife at Duke, our kids went to Duke, my uncle went to, I mean, I mean you see so much of that connection that once, once you're into this family, it just, it, it spreads because you realize how transformative the experience here is. Yeah. yeah. One of the last times I saw you was, was in Birmingham at the end of the, of the last season. And then it seemed like the new season started immediately. We were just talking a little bit about that football as a year round. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since, uh, since the end of the last season for Duke and starting your first season here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's quite remarkable. I, I was hired around December 9th, 10th, somewhere in there. And to your point, the team is finishing a bowl game. And uh, so you're there, but you're still a little bit on the sidelines, right? You're right. kind of in the periphery. Uh, you want to respect the the outgoing staff. They Absolutely. did a great job. They did. Team finished the year the way they ought to. They, they won the bowl game. Well, then everyone goes away on Christmas vacation. Yeah. So from my standpoint, you're, you're hiring a staff. You're putting the staff together. Certainly, we're making some additions in the transfer portal, some guys that came in in the mid-year. But you really want to get around your football team. You want to get around your guys. Well, school doesn't start here until the second week in January. So you finally get back. It was 30 days between the wow. first time I spoke to the team and the second time I spoke to the team, wow. which is remarkable. Yeah. And then guess what happens? Then we all go on the road recruiting for about, it seems like another 30 days. This week in February, without recruiting being open, we're, 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 it's a dead period, so we have to be on campus. It's really been great because I feel like it's the first time in over two months that we've been able to get around our current players. Yeah. Um, and... That's where I'm so thankful for a guy like David Feely in our strength and conditioning program. He did such a great job the last two years. He has provided the stability for our guys so they can just go right back to work and, and all the things that they believe made them great the last couple of years, that's still in place. So we got a chance to go into the uh, down into the weight room and we could see all of the guys that were coming in for optional workouts and they're signing on the board. It was pretty impressive to see how committed our players are to uh, getting better every day, which is really important. Can you share where you think where you where you want to take Duke football in the next few years? Where do you what do you see? Yeah, there's there's no reason why we should not compete for championships. There's what? no reason. The landscape of college football has changed. We know that it's going to continue to change. Um, and in my mind, the way it changes benefits Duke in a couple of ways that are tangible. Number one, with the transfer portal, which everybody is knows is here to stay, um, the players who come to Duke. For the most part, they understand the value of the Duke degree. So there are not many schools in the country that can say when a young man signs to come to your institution that they're committed to staying through graduation. The ones we're going to get at Duke, they're going to graduate from Duke. So that gives us a chance to develop. That gives us a chance to build a team and not just be a team of independent contractors. We can really build a team the right way. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I know for a fact that that wins. And then we have a chance now um, through you know, programs like NIL, um, where we can make our guys feel valued. Um, our players should not have to leave. And, you know, what I've told our guys, um, our players should leave Duke to go to the National Football League. If they want to, if they're going to play football somewhere else other than Durham, it's going to be the NFL. They don't have to go to another college um, to feel like they have to prove themselves in a different way. And we can do all those things here at Duke. That's awesome. Gets me excited. I'm ready, for, <laughs> I'm ready going down the tunnel to onto the field. I was ready, to, I was ready for game day to be here again. So Duke alumni love to help one another out. You've kind of right. mentioned that, that there's a, a deep passion. It's part of the secret sauce of this place. So with 200,000, almost 200,000 alumni out there, what can, what can alumni do to help support Duke football and the players uh, that will represent us? Well, you, you said something a couple minutes ago about just the, the idea of, of getting better, right? The players coming in for extra work to just get better. Yeah. And that's what we tell, you know, it's an old coaching adage. You, you're never staying the same. You're getting better, you're getting worse. So... When you mentioned that, that, that number of Duke alumni, how many people they are, right? Well, everybody, everyone's running their own race, right? Everyone's in a different place of their life, uh, their age, uh, where they are in their professional career. So what I would challenge them is the same thing that I would challenge our players, which is everybody can plus one, right? 
do one thing better than you did a year ago. Um, if you came to four games last year, come to five this year. If you came to two, come to three. Um, if you didn't see us play on the road last year, come see us play on the road. If you're able to give to the, to the program or to the university, give something, whatever plus one is for you. But I think that's what is important right now. If, we, if you look at the, the landscape, as I mentioned, football is very important. And to protect what everyone will have their own story of what Duke means to them. That's why this place is so special. Yeah. But all those stories will end up with the idea that Duke is special. Well, to protect really what makes Duke amazing, that we are the best of, of all worlds, in this current landscape, football is very important for that because we know some change is a coming. And so I think to rally around football protects everything that Duke, it protects the Duke hospital, protects Duke basketball, protects um, the business school, it protects all aspects of Duke um, to keep us on the forefront of what's going on right now in college athletics. That sounds pretty awesome. I love the plus one. I'm gonna use that myself <laughs> now because I think that's a pretty good mentality. Well, Coach Diaz, I, I really appreciate uh, you taking some time to talk with me today. The one thing I can absolutely guarantee you, you have the full support of the Alumni Engagement Office, and I think I can speak for most of the 200,000 alums out there. They are so excited uh, for your team and so excited to see where you take the football. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. We're excited to uh, put a team out in the field that makes our entire alumni network proud to be a Duke Blue Devil. Excellent. Thank you, Coach Diaz. Thank you.